very good morning and i am back i don't know whether you need me or not every saturday but i am here let me start off with uh, digressing for a minute and explaining the difference between needs and wants in fact if you go back into history there was a time when people used to look down upon india and say that india is a very poor country gandhi ji retorted by saying that india has enough for everybody's need but not enough for anybody's greed that is how he defined the wealth of our country anyway greed is out we are not going to discuss greed today but we are definitely going to discuss the difference between needs and wants as we go into the topic deeper what happens is that we very often tend to mix up between needs and uh, wants we do not know which is the dividing line let's say that i am a person who use you who has to travel and who is need to uh, you know who is used to having good uh, conveyance and all that so i may say that my need is to have a vehicle when i go i can't walk down long distances or i cannot go cycling or something so i have a need for a vehicle to travel but if i say that my vehicle has to have a, a stereo system has to have leather cushions has to have this luxury and that and all that that is what i want there's nothing wrong with wanting it i may want to have certain luxuries and if i have the money and i'm entitled to it there's nothing wrong with it as long as i'm aware of the fact that there is a difference between the needs and the uh, wants and this is very typical of human beings see most of the animals stick to their needs yes there are the best friends of uh, human beings uh, you know like dogs who have tremendous wants more than their needs they want to be petted by their master they want to have the presence of their loved ones and things like that but in general i'm telling you that human beings seem to be having more of wants than the uh, needs as you know when we talk about needs we need food clothing shelter some basic things uh, like that and some sort of uh, maybe even a little bit of saving for the future so that we should not run into difficulties all that can be put into the category of uh, uh, needs but as you know many of us human beings are not satisfied with that we have our wants so i would like to have not only a house but a luxurious house i would not only want to have a wardrobe with uh, sufficient clothes in it but i would like to have some expensive or branded uh, uh, clothes that's how it uh, goes in this let me also add the fact that it is not just material needs very often we have emotional needs we want to be loved we want to be cared for people who are not loved who do not have people who care for them can be extremely lonely people and in extreme cases they can go off into depression or they can be suicidal all that happens when a person feels that i am unloved there's nobody for uh, uh, me because primarily we are social animals we thrive on human contact and social contact and all these uh, uh, things if you look at a child for example who has somehow unwittingly been given the impression by the parents that he or she is loved depending on the performance that the child does as a student we don't do it 99% of the parents love their children unconditionally but without realizing it we express or we convey a wrong message a child feels that when i do badly and i get the report card to my parents i get scolded i get put down they point out all my negatives they say that you are too much into friends too much into mobiles all that happens so generally i as a child get a feeling that my parents really don't care much for me they don't love me as much as i would have 
wanted it. And the child also realizes that when he or she does very well in the exams, suddenly there is celebration. Not only they are praising me, they are also calling up other people and telling them, see, our child has done so well, our child has achieved this, our child has done this. So what happens is that the child's mind equates the love, affection, etc. to the performance. And this can have such a tremendous you know, impact that many people, even in their adult life, think that unless I do something great, unless I get promotions, unless I become the top man, unless I have a big bungalow, people will not care for me and people will not love me. That is the significance when you are dealing with children. Please keep this thing in the, uh, mind. There's one more angle of uh, our needs and that is spiritual needs. Many of us have this thing that I want to feel that there is some higher form of life. I want to feel that there is something beyond anything that is going on. You have heard people make statements. Somebody is in real trouble. He has been let down very badly and things have really gone bad. You will hear this person making a statement saying, doesn't matter even if nobody understands uh, uh, me. God understands me. God will take care of me. Innumerable people who would have otherwise got very frustrated, very depressed, if they actually start believing that God needs me, God loves me, God will be kind to me and God appreciates me, that is enough for a person to go through the worst of uh, uh, struggles. And that is where the role of some of the prominent gurus also See, no guru can give you what you want as in material senses. They, he can't make you pass the exam. He can't get you wealth. He can't get you anything like that. But yet, if you have a special guru or if you have somebody whom you really admire and look up to, you desperately want to be loved and needed by that person. And if you get that feeling, then you feel very, very comfortable. You get inspired, your motivation level goes up, you start performing better, you start facing challenges better, etc. Then comes this thing which, as I said, is unique to uh, human beings, that we want to plan for the future. Even if I have very good sumptuous food today, I have a nice comfortable roof over my head, I have clothing, I have my family, I have everything, I start thinking into what is it that I want in the future. And we want that to be something unique, something special. We want to stand out in a crowd. We are not happy if we are told that you will get what everybody else gets. Maybe that was the reason why, you know, communism, for example, which had spread so much in countries like USSR and all that collapsed overnight. While they had said everybody will get equal uh, thing based on their uh, needs, but everybody wanted to feel a little more personally that I am in some way unique. I am special. I want to be different from others. There are a, a few posters which uh, I identified and I asked Anis to show it to you. Have a look at the first one in this uh, uh, series where the person is saying, I want to feel loved, wanted, needed, and special. See the last word. It is not enough for me to be loved, to be wanted, to be needed. I also want to feel special. That is what I want to focus on in uh, today's uh, uh, life. Very often, if we do not have very good self-esteem or self-worth, if we do not consider ourselves capable, you know, or fully up to the um, uh, potential, then we start leaning on others. Yes, Anish, thanks. Huh. So we start feeling that 
I am not complete by myself and I want support, love, care and treated special by others. And that can even fill up a tremendous vacuum. It can take us away from loneliness. But here comes something which I want us to reflect on. Very often we do get, you know, things, but the question is that am I becoming emotionally dependent on others? Am I becoming emotionally dependent even on one person? I don't think that's a very healthy thing. You will come across incidents where somebody has a loved one and that person has gone out or something and is not physically available at, for that moment. This person keeps saying, call me and let me know how you are. Frankly, it is not call me and let me know how you are. It is call me and show me that you love me enough to take a break from whatever you are doing and make that phone call to me. That is what, you know, is very, very important. I want you to reflect on that. We masquerade it by saying that I'm concerned about that person and that is why I want that person to call me and be in touch with me or to tell me his or her welfare. No. Very often it is my own need which I am somehow putting it down to the other person. And if I don't get that, if I feel that I am not getting that special attention, I can not only become very lonely, I can lose my self-esteem, I can go into severe depression. And you will also see in extreme cases, people who commit suicide. When we work on this aspect of prevention of suicide, we always emphasize on the fact that a person who is loved by others will not be prevented from committing suicide. The person knows A, B, C, love me very much. Still the person, you know, if he feels extremely suicidal, he will go ahead with the suicide. But if the person feels that I am needed by someone, the person will not commit suicide. That is the extreme case of frustration, helplessness. But the person says, I am needed by this human being. I cannot leave that person and go away. Such is the stronger thing. And on the plus side, being needed also increases motivation. I know that my family needs me, my wife and children need me. I will work harder in my career and in my work. I feel that my office people need me, my organization needs uh, me, my boss needs me. And I find that my efficiency goes up. I'm performing much more. We think that we work for material rewards and for increments and promotions. And we do also to some extent. But very often what we don't realize is that we work for the feeling that, yes, I am needed by this organization, this boss, my colleagues, whoever it is. Even if I'm not getting financial rewards, most of us are built like that. We perform better when that is done. And that is the reason why it is said that people don't leave organizations they leave bosses. Majority of the people who resign from a nice, comfortable, long-term employment is often because they feel, my boss doesn't need me. My boss keeps putting me down. My boss doesn't seem to be aware of my capabilities and my efficiency. So when my boss doesn't feel the need for me, okay, then I'll push off. I'll go somewhere else where I am needed. Let him manage without uh, uh, me. And the same thing happens to a much greater uh, extent when it comes to family. You will even see a homemaker who's an excellent cook. And 
she goes out of the way to cook the best of dishes dishes for each one of the family members she doesn't mind putting in those extra hours in the kitchen to ensure that she satisfies the taste buds of every individual family member at home but the day they have gone out or the day they are not eating or the day they are just in a hurry and they are not bothered about what is there you see how her motivation comes down if my good cooking is not needed why should i cook or why should i at least cook something which is you know uh, special for uh, them i'll do the bare minimum and that, that's the end of the uh, story you can see that change everywhere from as i said office to everywhere i would also like you to understand that we have this uh, uh, you know requirement that i should be special to somebody this you will see in the second poster which anish will show you now about how i want no this one we have already seen second one yeah i just want to feel wanted mind this sentence i want to feel wanted needed loved by whom by someone who wants me needs me and loves me that's very important i can have so many others beyond my intimate circle who say that they love me and they want me and they need me it's not enough we want that thing from somebody who loves me specially somebody who is unique in my uh, uh, life and there are times when we also want to make sure that we are exclusive if you allow me to give you a stupid uh, um, example the uh, let's say a man goes out on tour he comes back opens his suitcase and shows his wife that i brought i bought this lovely saree for you she is very happy she says even while he was on work even while he was having a hectic time on tour and all that he thought of me he realized that i have need for uh, more clothing and he went out of the way he is not a good shopper but he did go out of the way he went shopping he purchased this thing and gave it to me while she is admiring the sari that he has got for her he pulls out another one and says i got one more for my sister Poof. 50% of the joy is gone i am not exclusive you are buying in wholesale for everybody so what's so great about it even though a minute back she was feeling so happy suddenly knowing that it was not anything exclusive to me he bought one for me one for his sister one for his mother or whatever it is that means i am not special in his life this is how we do things and why do we do things as i mentioned earlier is because at times we have this low self esteem we have this craving to prove ourselves and to show that we are worthy of being needed by that special uh, person there are times for example i have even seen you know a child comes to one parent and says you know i want this 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 and uh, you are not giving me and these and that i will go to daddy and i will ask him the mother was probably thinking of giving that to the child or obliging the child but the moment he mentions that i will go to daddy and he will give me she gets very badly put off go 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 to your daddy why did you come to me at all in the first place it is your own child you know that the child has certain wants or needs or something and for whatever reason he feels that his chances of getting it are better from daddy but a person can get very put off either gender it could be father it could be mother but these are the small small things which i wanted to highlight you will see now the third uh, poster which uh, no anish will show you this is something which i want you to have a look uh, uh, at 
somebody comes and says, I promise that I'll make you feel wanted, loved and needed every single day. Haven't you had people like this? I will love you forever. I will love you and care for you till my last breath. I will love you not only in this janma, but for the next seven janmas also. People make such type of, what do you say, boasts or, uh, you know, statements without realizing the consequence of it. But the important thing is, if the other person who is hearing this feels some lack of, you know, completeness, some level of low self-esteem, some sort of feeling that, you know, I am not complete and I have to have the love and that too of my special person. In this case, it could be a partner. And the person feels that I am incomplete without the partner. This is what I keep telling a lot of young people who say that I want to desperately get married. I tell them that if you feel you are incomplete without having a life partner and you jump into marriage only because of that, you're making a very, very big mistake. You should not do it because you have a vacuum. You should do it because you want to enhance your life. And that is a crucial difference. So all of us can feel nice, comfortable if I am needed, if I am wanted. And here again, please remember, I should be needed and wanted at the emotional level, not at the physical level. If a housewife or homemaker gets the feeling that my family needs me only because I do the cooking and cleaning, that's not really good for her uh, self-esteem, no? That could have been done by a maid servant also. What's so great about it? But if they love me, if they care for me, and if they need me, they want me, for me as a person, for who I am, not for what I am, what am I? I am the wife, I am the mother, I am the cook, I am the homemaker, I am the cleaner, etc. So if I am loved because of that, it doesn't give me satisfaction. Yes, there is a strong need. I know that if I don't cook, nobody in the house will eat, nobody else can cook, nobody has got any other uh, resources. So they will not get breakfast if I don't cook, get up early in the morning and cook. So you see how strong the need is? But what is it? It's a physical need. And if it is a physical need because of certain things of what I am, I am a good cook, I am a good housemaker, I am a good this and that. I want to feel needed for who I am as an individual. I want the other person to have that feeling of love, caring, needed, wanted. Because there is something very special about me. And this is where I also want to caution you that there are times when people who do not uphold the highest of values and principles. And if they realize that their partner or somebody very intimate, very close is not giving me sufficient importance and not doing things that I want. As I showed you in the previous uh, uh, slide, the person starts making very tall claims. And the person actually says, I need you. I've had occasions to counsel people, whether it is an employee who is quitting an organization going away, or whether it is a spouse who says that I want a divorce, I want separate. Uh, this. If the boss or if the partner comes and says, don't go, please, I need you. I can't do without you. I need you very badly. I know I've treated you in, in uh, not a very nice way. I know I have been bad to you. I know I have done very horrible things to you, but I still need you. Don't go away, please. And you'll be amazed at the number of people who succumb to that, who give up whatever logical thinking they had had for days and weeks and months and sometimes years. 
that no, this is not what I want. This is not the quality of life. This is not the type of relationship. After doing all that homework, the person had decided that no, I think I would like to separate either from this organization or from this relationship or whatever it is. But if the other person comes and says, I need you, I cannot live without you. There's nobody on earth who cannot live without another human being, right? Whoever it is. Yes, I'll feel sad when I lose somebody. But it's not that I cannot live without you. There is no such need that if I don't have my office colleague or if I don't have my uh, life partner, I'm not going to crumble and die. But yet, that is the type of impression that they create. I know of people who go to the extreme and say, I'll commit suicide if you leave me and go away. He will never do that. She will never do that. But when that is conveyed to the other person, more than the threat of suicide, more than the fear, you know, continuous this thing that I need you, what occurs in the person's mind is, wow, here is somebody close to me, my boss, my partner, whoever the person is, who cannot do without me. I am so important. I am needed so much by this person. Person says, I cannot live without you. I cannot run this organization without you. And that is when people get very complacent. People fool themselves into thinking because there is somewhere a little bit of a vacuum in me where I have this craving that, yes, I should be loved, I should be cared for, I should be wanted and needed. But the person who tries to come and flatter me takes advantage of it. And taking advantage of it, if he or she can put up a very serious face and say that this is what it is, person may break down and cry. I know of cases where the person has gone and touched the feet and said that I bow down to you. I will never harm you again. I'll never be bad to you again, but don't leave me and go away. And the person changes his or her uh, mind. These are some very simple, very basic things about how humans uh, behave. I just want you to be aware of these things because while as human beings, there is a strong need in us to feel wanted, to feel needed, but we must learn to balance. We must start off initially by telling oneself that I will strive to be a complete person by myself. Even if nobody cares for me, nobody wants me or needs me, it doesn't matter. I can still continue with my life. So when I make relationships or when I take up a job or when I enter into some matrimony or whatever it is, I will do it to enhance my life, to improve the quality of my life. Not because I'm desperate, I'm emotionally facing a vacuum and that is why I want people. It never works that way. Please keep this in mind. I've been observing there have been already a lot of very interesting comments and questions in the chat box. So as usual, I will take my one minute break and have a quick cup of tea. And I will be back with you to make this session as interactive as possible. We will discuss each and every one of the comments and the questions that you have put up. Good morning, everyone. I was just listening to Ali sitting behind the scenes and what he said that who I am to know is so important. And in that, sometimes the whole journey or the whole life goes, if we don't make an effort to go and speak to someone, that's where what we say that we offer free counseling. We have email counseling, telephonic counseling, face-to-face -face counseling. Please use that facility and help the 
extended family or friends and whomever you come across that who can get the benefit from fee counseling please suggest them to get in touch with banjara you all banjarites know what banjara is but it helps many more if you speak to them and tell them to use the facilities which are completely free apart from that you just saw the poster international program in child and adolescent development yes we have so many overseas students who have passed out that's how we thought let this program now onwards which was earlier ccad certificate in child and adolescent development has become international program in child and adolescent development and the admissions are open for it which again can add to understand who i am or you can help children to develop what they are identify their individual qualities identify their strengths and lift their head and live in this world beautiful world yeah apart from this we do offer as you all know but i would again remind because this is the time of the year where children are confused don't know what to do next after this 2 3 years of online school and exam a lot of confusion is going around so just to remind you that banjara does career counseling again we do have online facility for children who are out of bangalore but for children in bangalore we say come over speak to us if required do the aptitude test but at least come make an effort to speak to the career counselor get a feel of how to make a decision which is for life it's not about the next decision of what do i do next year it's a decision of life that's why i feel it's very very important that it is taken in an informed way carefully and be around we as adults with them in this process of taking their lifetime decision yeah so i think ali is back for you yes i am very much back and i will start looking at the comments and question that have come from you the first one is from vidya who says good morning dr ali i have a question we say that we should not be selfish but these days people are becoming uh, mean that they just come and talk to you when they want and then they expect something from us otherwise they are not even bothered to ask whether we are alive or not and say we should not expect anything from anybody is this what people need from us isn't this being selfish yes i agree with you vidya there are a lot of people like that but thankfully not everybody is like that i can't give you statistics about how many people are selfish and how many people are altruistic but i can tell you that if you develop the skill of empathy which we keep talking about all the time in our counseling courses everywhere that if you can learn to judge people if you can learn to understand people you will be able to differentiate between those who are selfish who come to you only with a specific need there's nothing wrong fulfill their need if you're feeling uh, generous go ahead and be do a good favor but as they say you know do it and just forget about uh, it at the same time identify those people who are your true friends who are not the selfish type they are there all around you it's just that they are very silent and you know quiet people so you don't get to know them unless you make that effort to know uh, them surekha says when you learn of your imme immeasurable worth you'll stop giving people discounts yes very true surekha you put it in a very nice commercial way but that's how it is even human relationships are in a way like commercial transactions that every relationship has have a give and take and it starts off a person who has got enough money when he goes to the market has that feeling that i will not compromise i will get the best of product because i got whatever money is needed only a person who has very less money in his pocket starts looking around and saying let me grab whatever i can get because i don't know whether i'll get it or not the same thing happens in relationships Okay, Anjali says uh, when uh, we say 
that I am needed by someone, are we not dependent on others' acceptance? Instead of we reframe the thought and say, I am needed for myself and so my well-being. Very true. That's exactly what I have been telling. You know, that am I needed just because I earn money for the family and provide them with a good uh, living standard? Am I loved only or needed only because I am the homemaker and I cook good food on time and give it to everybody? That is not enough. Am I needed for who I am, not what I am? If they look at me as an individual and they feel that, yes, we need you at the emotional level. Yes, we are very thankful that you are providing for us or you are cooking for us or you're whatever love and affection and time you are giving to us. But we, there is something beyond that. Uh, that. Ha, Vidya also says, um, if we love ourselves, then why is it that we need others? Because we are basically social animals, Vidya. We cannot survive alone. We are primates who are, by our metabolism, by our millions of years of history, we need to have social contacts to thrive. The worst thing, the worst punishment that is given to a criminal is solitary confinement. He has a room to himself. He has whatever facilities are available to the other convicts, but he has nobody to talk to 24 by 7. And people have been known to go mad when they are put in solitary confinement. So that is our need. Surekha says the surest way to lose your self-worth is by trying to find it through the eyes of others. Very well said, Surekha. That's exactly what it is. When I do something, when I achieve something, when I perform something, can I be my best judge? Yes, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to, like in studies, I never scored 100 out of 100. But as long as I am good at it, I'm performing well, be it at the workplace, be it my role at home, be it anywhere. If I am conscious and I know that my conscience is clear, then we should learn not to be dependent on being praised by others. And the more you become dependent on being praised by others, the more you will start getting surrounded by psychophants who will not praise you, but who will flatter uh, you. Right. Vinita says, how do we deal with people who only approach us when they want something from us? It's like a one-way relationship which we very well know. See the last three words. Vinita says, we know. That means Vinita has developed that skill of empathy. To be able to differentiate, to be able to look at the why behind the what. To be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes and think, is this person genuine? Is this person coming with a give and take, a codependency? Or is this person just trying to take advantage of uh, me? And there, as I told you, if your self-worth is good, if you feel complete within yourself and if your conscience is clear, even if people are pointing out by saying, oh, you are so selfish, that person came for help and you didn't do it, you have so much, you know, and you are thankless and you are not helping others, doesn't matter. Become immune to that. You decide whom you are going to help and not. So you know this person will just take advantage of you and will disappear. When you need or if you ask that person, the person will never be available to you when you know that. Politely but firmly refuse. We get scared that if I refuse, I may lose friends. I think it's a good thing to lose such friends. It's better that we don't have such friends who come and take advantage of uh, you, right? Navina says, I think it's very important that I am needed by myself first. Very well said, Navina. Respect myself and love myself to the fullest. When this is there, then I would be able to attract the right kind of people as I would be transmitting such vibes. Absolutely right. But unfortunately, as I mentioned right in the beginning, we have been trained into looking only at other people's needs, right from childhood. And in fact, we are told that if you respect yourself, love yourself, and you, you fulfill your own needs, you are a selfish person. That's not true. You remember that thing which, you know, they quote that when uh, 
the air hostess tells you that if there is a drop in oxygen pressure in the aircraft, those oxygen masks will drop down. You can put it on your mouth and breathe freely. But before helping a child or an elderly person, first put on your mask. If you don't put on your mask, by the time you're putting the mask on the other person, you may faint from lack of oxygen. So once you put on your mask, you can help so many other people. You can do so many other things, isn't it? That is the principle that we need to uh, follow in these areas, to love oneself, to care for uh, oneself, and to be able to differentiate. As a counselor, unfortunately, I have come across over the years and years, innumerable cases. There are people who can understand any outsider coming and flattering. There'll be a salesman who will you know, praise you to heaven and say, please buy my product. There will be a colleague in the office who will say, you're a wonderful person and then dump the work on uh, you. There will be a neighbor who will keep on praising you and highlighting so many of your good qualities and then ask you for favors which you may or may not want to give. So the, there are people like that. And as I said, these are the people who are most visible because they have something personal. They have something with some vested interest. No? So they are the ones who will keep coming forward to you. And they will be visible. And that is one of the reasons why, as one of you said, we get this feeling that the world is full of selfish people. All the people who approach me are trying to take advantage of me, are trying to get something from me and are not willing to give back anything to me, even at an emotional level. But that is not true. As I said, it is those people who have a vested interest who will be the most vocal, the most visible. But if you look beyond them, you will definitely find people who are there and who are good to you. Keep looking out for some uh, for people like that. Navina also says, when I am able to keep myself really happy, I would be able to spread that joy and take better care of others. Yes, exactly like the oxygen mask I mentioned. Hence, it is not at all selfish, rather a generous act on taking care of self. Be it an office manager, be it a homemaker. If you are, as Navina said, able to keep yourself really happy, if you are a contented person, if you know how to manage your day-to-day -day stress and lead a very balanced life for yourself, if you know when to take a break, when to ensure that you don't get uh, upset over things, then you can actually give better performance to the others. That's the beauty of it. Yes, Rekha says, if someone is stupid enough to walk away from you, be smart enough to let them go. Actually, you know something, Suraka, they are not stupid. They are walking away from you because you did not give them what they want. So what they are doing is they will walk off to somebody else and try to entice them. It is like, you know, a beggar or somebody like that comes to you and you say, no, I don't give a charity like this. What does the person do? He immediately turns around and starts going to the other people because he knows somebody or the other will be so beneficent that I will get my money. Exactly the same thing happens in relationships. My most favorite uh, um, author, one of my most favorite authors, Scott Peck, in The Road Less Traveled, in that book he wrote, there are people who go around with a t-shirt message, you know, the, particularly in the West, uh, it's very common for people to wear t-shirts with a slogan or a message written on it. People go around with a mental t-shirt message saying, I need your love or I want your love. The moment somebody you know, uh, understands that message, mental message, they run away from you. It is like a beggar comes to you saying, I need your money, I want your money. You, you want to get away from there as fast as possible. So what Scott Peck suggests is give out a mental t-shirt message which says, I deserve your love. 
and that is when people will start coming to you that is when people will recognize you and for that as one of you said earlier love yourself respect yourself feel complete within yourself ah sheila has a very interesting question sometimes i really wonder who is actually near and dear yes i agree with you particularly the way society and relationships have changed in the last one generation what has happened is that we have gone from what we used to call as defined relationships to more and more of undefined relationships you can ask your grandparents or you know people who are, have lived uh, maybe 50 years 100 years back they will tell you that their life revolved around their defined relationships grandfather grandmother uncle aunt father mother brother sisters cousins nephews nieces children grandchildren and added to that this particular person is the priest of our temple this particular person is so and so this particular everything had a label on it and you have to stick to it but today what has happened we have moved away from our roots many of us are not living in our hometown or places where we are surrounded with people even if we are living in the hometown our near and dear and our relatives may have migrated they may have gone away the locality is completely changed is full of strangers now where you were born and brought up in that situation you have to create near and dear so shila has asked a very correct question who are near and dear it goes back to what i said a little earlier you have to look around for people who are genuine people who care for you people who will ask for certain favors but are willing to do something in return and that is how there should be a collaboration instead of a compromise ha ah, dhanish dr dhanish says how to keep improving our self esteem on a regular basis oh there's a lot of things in that dhanish and as most of you know i have written a nice uh, small little you know workbook on building self esteem in that i have given a lot of exercises and all that you can just talk to venu or you know call up the office or uh, you know mail us and uh, you can get a copy uh, uh, from them a lot of these very essential things like self esteem for example what i have done is based on years and years of people's experiences good bad how others have worked on it i have made these small small booklets which are on an average 20 pages but i have tried to put in a lot of practical aspects into it so that you know you can actually try it out and hopefully improve the quality of your life or improve that particular skill where you need to give yourself boost be it self esteem or whatever and in fact the same answer goes to surekha's question what should we do to feel more complete within ourselves it starts with self esteem a person with good self esteem automatically feels complete within oneself relationship should be the dessert after your meal not the basic meal the moment i start depending on my close relationships or other people it is like without them i will starve because if they become my meal and if they are not available to me it's like i am being denied of food right now i have enough food which is by my self esteem i feel worthy i feel that i can do things by myself i don't necessarily need anybody else and i am not craving to be needed by somebody else it's a wonderful thing to have people who need me or want me but for any reason i find that no i am not needed by someone or i am not wanted by uh, someone i am still complete within myself and having a relationship with some such uh, uh, people is as i said the desert after the food your uh, you know basic uh, uh sustenance is not dependent on that but it enriches your life isn't it it enriches your meal to end it up with a nice sweet or ice cream or chocolate or whatever it is that's how relationship should uh, be navina says i think developing our intuition feeling the vibes 
also helps us to identify genuine and other people. Trusting oneself is very, very important and not blindly getting influenced by others' opinion. I think most of you are aware that we have a classroom session here on the third Thursday of every month at 10 o'clock, one hour, 10 to 11. And in fact, this third Thursday, which is the 20th of uh, October, the topic is what Navina mentioned just now. Can I trust my gut feeling? That's the topic. Should I follow my gut feeling? All of us have gut feelings. Unless you suppressed it very badly, you do have gut feeling coming up. The question is how to develop that, how to nurture that. Exactly as uh, Noina said, develop your intuition, feel the vibes, and then you will not only be able to identify and select the others, you will find that you yourself are taking right decisions. That is the beauty of this. So that's why I've been doing work a lot on gut feeling. And lately, there has been a lot of advances in neurology, which have told us that the gut is like a mini brain. So the gut is not just something philosophical or something uh, psychological. The gut is physiological also. I will be presenting that part of it also on 20th. So please do come, tell your friends to come. It's an open and a free session like our uh, FB uh, sessions, anybody is welcome. But we do want to meet people face to face to fe feel that human touch, which, as you know, has really gone bad after the COVID and the lockdowns. Innumerable people who used to be social and all are not doing it now. Surika says sometimes all you have to do is forget what you feel and remember what you deserve. Yes, that's a good idea. I would not go to the extent of saying, forget what you feel. In fact, it's very difficult to forget. But what I would just modify it a little bit to what Sureka said was, put aside what you feel. Acknowledge the uh, feelings. You can't force yourself to forget. But prioritize. Tell yourself, right now, it is not the feeling which is important. It is what I deserve that is important. I also have a worth. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be wanted and needed. I deserve to have good relationship. So even though right now I may be a little bitter, I may be feeling sad or I may be feeling lonely or whatever it is, keep those emotions aside because the more I keep thinking of that, there are people who say, I have been let down by this friend. Now I will never trust a friend. People who say that I've lost a dear one. Now, I don't think I can ever have a close relationship with uh, uh, anybody. I don't think I can ever bond with uh, anybody. That is not true. As long as there is life, you can continue to have beautiful relationships in different manners and in different uh, uh, ways. So cherish the fact that today you are alive and today you are surrounded by human beings. There are people who will love you, who will care for you, who will need you and who will want you. Select from those whom you want to interact uh, with. Navina says, pathetic part is we fall into the trap of our own insecurities and then blame others. Yes, I'm glad you pointed this out, Navina, because I also come across a lot of such people who say that so-and-so let me down. So-and-so promise that I will love you forever and ever and now see how he or she is behaving. But don't you think you played a role by making a fool of yourself, by getting carried away by what that person said? At that point of time, your gut feeling, your intuition was telling you that, no, this person is not telling the truth. I cannot rely on this person. But your own need was such, such that you forced yourself into believing it. It felt so nice to believe that this person loves me so much. This person needs me so much. I have to oblige. But... In reality, what happens? That's what I told you. That when that person lets us down, we either continue in a very horrible, you know, roller coaster of our emotions, every time building up hope, every time hoping that the person will now change, will be nice to me, but that doesn't happen. Or worse, what can happen is that the relationship breaks and you are left with that vacuum and with that regret and with that loneliness and all these things. So that is why we need to take care of these uh, uh, things. 
Saraf Saab always joins us all the way from Maharashtra and I really welcome uh, him. He says, the more we crave for want, we go away from the loved ones. Yes. Please note the word that he has used, that is crave. Anything that you crave for, you will lose your rationality. You lose your balance. And you start doing the wrong things. If I am so hungry that I am craving for food, I may just go to a roadside uh, place and pick up some very unhealthy food and eat it. With the result that I may fall sick for one week. But if I am hungry and I say that yes, I need food, within reasonable time, I start looking around to see where I can get good uh, food. Where I can get food which is tasty, hygienic and which will fulfill the purpose. So even if it takes me another 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, I will find the right thing. The same thing applies to relationships. That is what I want you to understand. I welcome Mr. Haider Naseem who has joined us uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to uh, see so many new people coming into the group. That no, doesn't mean, mean that I don't need or want all of you very loyal listeners of this uh, program. I really cherish each one of you and your loyalty and your commitment to be part of this because not only I enjoy talking to you, I have a lot which I can learn from you. Believe me, every time I close this session, I go back and jot down a few points which I have learned from you people. And that is the reason why we say that we would like to have you. Oh, Mr. Haider Nassim says that he is from Maldives. So that's another pleasure for us. Maldives has had a special place in my heart from the time the first student from Maldives 20 years uh, back, Aisha Ali Naz. She was the first student from Maldives that we had, and she has continued to be a good friend. After that, also, we have had many uh, students from uh, Maldives and friends who come and wish us and all that. So I think our relationships between India and Maldives should prosper. We are very, very happy to have such people with uh, uh, us, including Mr. Haider Nasim. Yeah, Navina says, thank you. Sureka says, thank you. And like I said, I equally thank you. I'm not trying to flatter you or I'm not trying to be unnecessarily humble. But I do want you to understand that there are a lot of benefits to me. Nothing happens on their uh, own. Dr. Sai Kumar from Chennai says, I've joined very late, but it's never too late. Absolutely, Dr. Sai, I agree 100% with uh, uh, you. It's a pleasure to have you. He has been a very dear friend of mine for I don't know, 30, 35 years uh, and now he's a professor of medicine and such people, knowledgeable people, wise people, senior people, when they, you know, uh, are in touch with me, when they appreciate something and when they have this uh, interactions, I feel very fulfilled. I feel very needed and wanted. I just wanted to share that. And as we wind up for the uh, day, I wanted to tell you that there is a very nice uh, topic which we have picked up for next Saturday. Anis is showing that uh, topic to you. It is, are married people more lonely? Uh, this I picked up because a lot of people say, tell youngsters or people who are not so young, get married, otherwise you're going to be very lonely if you don't marry. So I'm not against the institution of marriage. I think it's one of the most wonderful things that human beings have. But we need to understand the nuances of the plus or minus of that relationship. We cannot take it for granted that just because I am married, I will never face loneliness. Or just because I'm not married, I will be lonely. Either way, it works. So I will be seeing you next Saturday at 11 o'clock with this very intriguing topic. Until then, see you. Bye-bye. Tata and Jai Hind.